Hi, John. Well, you're absolutely right. The defense secretary seeming to break with statements made by the president who has said uh, he would look into seizing Iraq's oil. Well, defense secretary James Mattis making it clear that that is not the goal, an attempt to reassure uh, nervous Iraqis about this potential tactic. Take a listen to what he said and to past statements by Press Secretary Sean Spicer. I think all of us uh, here in this room, all of us in America have generally paid for our gas and oil all along, and I'm sure that we will continue to do so in the future. Uh, we're not in Iraq to seize anybody's oil. The old expression, to the victor belong the spoils. You remember I always used to say, keep the oil. I wasn't a fan of Iraq. I didn't want to go into Iraq. But I will tell you, when we were in, we got out wrong. And I always said, in addition to that, keep the oil. Now, I said it for economic reasons. But if you think about it, Mike, if we kept the oil, you probably wouldn't have ISIS, because that's where they made their money in the first place. So we should have kept the oil. But OK. <laughs> Maybe you'll have another chance. But the fact is, should have kept the oil. Well, I think what the president's been very clear about in foreign policy is too often the United States is going in with a lot of money, a lot of manpower, and in many cases losing both uh, loss of life. Uh, and we want to make sure that our interests are protected. And so if we're going in to a country for, for a cause, I think he wants to make sure that America's getting something out of it for the commitment and the sacrifice that we're making. Can you unequivocally state that this administration will not send more troops into Iraq to, as the president has put it, take the oil? I'm not going to talk about what we may or may not do. I think the president's been very clear that he doesn't telegraph forward what taking options off the table. That's not a good negotiating skill. That's not how he works. There's a reason he's been successful at negotiating is because he does it in a way that doesn't telegraph to people what he's going to take on or off the table. And that's really the critical point, because in order to retake the oil, it would likely require sending more troops into Iraq. Uh, some foreign policy experts have also said that taking Iraq's oil uh, could actually violate uh, the Geneva Convention. So there are concerns that have been raised with it. And again, this comes at a critical moment in the fight against ISIS and also as U.S. troops try and Iraqi troops try to reclaim Mosul. Defense Secretary James Mattis making that unannounced visit to Baghdad and really trying to reassure uh, the U.S. allies there that this is not a tactic that Americans are going to take. But of course, the president has said over and over again he's not going to signal and preview his strategy. So while the defense secretary is saying that this is something that's off the table. Again, it's something that we've heard a number of times from the president. So undoubtedly something that will be a topic of debate here at the White House. Guys, back to you. Kristen Walker, thank you so much. Donald Trump and James Mattis, who are you going to believe as we roll forward? Well, General Mattis is absolutely correct. Brett and I were just nodding to one another during the sequence that we just showed. I mean, taking the oil is a war crime. <laughs> and uh, you shouldn't confuse the 1st Marine Division with Quantrill's Raiders. Now, After the Civil War.